Can you explain the difference? Hello, and we say good day to you at this moment of your time. As the Playing Council, we speak on behalf of the Galactic Alliance and also many of your own guides and guardians who are present with you always, that come closer to you in the time that we open this bridge between your human reality and the higher dimensions of reality. We thank you for being open to us. We thank you for receiving this energy and supporting us in opening this bridge for in the way that we share energy with you, you also share energy with us. It is a co-creative -cre process that allows both you and ourselves to expand together. And we extend our great gratitude and appreciation to you for this. We come supporting the grand changes in your world. We know the channel has spoken very much about this in some ways, so we won't go too far into repeating any of those messages. But we would say that we are here for you with any questions that you have or anything you would like to share with us. And we will do our best to reflect and co-create together in hopes that you can as well tap into the energy of your own higher self. For as we share this energy with you, it can support you in cultivating that bridge within yourself to let your own higher self speak through you, and connect with you in deeper ways. So whenever you would like to begin with questions, we are here and ready. I have a question. Yes. Explain if it can the difference between a dimension and a density. The difference here is slightly uh, linguistic, for they're very similar. We wouldn't get too caught up on this. A dimension is a s an expression of reality. Some dimensions contain time and space. Some dimensions contain only space. Some dimensions go beyond into vibration, light and frequency alone. Density and dimension can be used mostly synonymously, so we wouldn't confuse them too much. Can I ask a personal question? <clears throat> Uh, my husband recently passed over. I was wondering if you're aware of him in any way. Yes, we can connect with his energy. Is there something you would like to know? Well, I assume he's all right. Yes, uh, he's well. He might still be resting. And maybe I'll just say hi. <laughs> oh, yes. He says hello as well. He is doing well and establishing a clear connection with Source. He is remembering himself as Source, to be more specific. And there's also a blissful reunion with many loved ones and also his other lifetime. He assures you that all is well. And he also wants to say he's sorry and ask for forgiveness for miscommunications that have happened along the way. For as he returns to Source, he has the opportunity to see areas where he was not always right. And he wants to know that he loves you unconditionally always. You can experience his energy, if you would like, calling him in and remembering him by lighting a prayer, or lighting a candle, or saying a prayer. He is always with you. Thank you. Our thanks to you. I'd like to ask, how, are being, how are, is our energy changing 
with 5G and chemtrails. How is that affecting us? Would you repeat it so we yep. can hear? We didn't hear it. I want to know how 5G and chemtrails are, how is that affecting our energy? Right. Well, we'll start, start with the 5G. And whenever there are new signals being broadcast, it takes some time for the human body to adjust. So you might have experienced some confusion, brain fog, or issues related to immune health when 5G first was released. Because this overlapped with the idea of the pandemic, it did add some stress. Though, after a year of the signal being out, most of you should adjust to the 5G. You'll know that this is something that the body can handle, and you will feel more connected to the earth when you go out of areas where there is a lot of signal. What would be more concerning is sleeping very close to a Wi-Fi router or Bluetooth device with some of those things turned on. However, individuals will find that they are sensitive to this to varying degrees. If you don't experience an immediate sensitivity, then don't concern yourself too much about it because it is also possible to think your way into new sensitivities that don't have to be a part of your experience. All right, so about the chemtrails, this one is a bit more problematic. The intention is good, and that's what we want to remind you, is that many of the things that you believe are some manipulation with ill intent are simply a way that those with power and in control are trying to create solutions that aren't necessarily working. The chemtrails are a weather manipulation tactic, and they're attempting to do this often to create more harmonious weather patterns to combat what is happening with the climate change. However, because they are using many toxic chemicals in the chemtrails, it is adding more levels of toxicity into the environment, again, which some people will be more sensitive to than others. You could use chemtrails in a positive way. The chemtrails that would be beneficial would be using monatomic gold or ormus. This was actually why your planet came to exist in the way it does in the first place the Anunnaki, who were attempting to stabilize their own atmosphere, were harvesting gold from your world and created the human race, as you know it now, to be their servants in support of mining gold. They took the gold back to their world to create, yes, chemtrails using the gold to stabilize their atmosphere. This is something that you might return to doing at one point in your world as the climate issues progress. For now, they're attempting to do that, but again, because of the chemicals they're using, it is causing health concerns for some. I have a friend who um, is very much into crystals. Yes. And he recently moved to Arkansas because there's lots of crystals down there and he has told me that there were very, very huge crystals down there and that he said the Pleiadians at one point moved some of them to other parts of the earth and the other thing he said to me that was sounded pretty amazing was he said, I mean he's read this, you know, that people have written about this about the Pleiadians, that the Pleiadians were using well, some of those big crystals are still there in Arkansas. Um, and that at one time, the Pleiadians were using them to generate energy or, you know, sort of as a power source. 
Do you have anything to say about that? Yes. Crystals are intelligent beings that also generate energy. And you know already that quartz is a key ingredient in so many of your technologies, and silicon and other minerals make up other technologies. So the quartz, and yes, many other crystals, can be used to broadcast energy. They can broadcast thought as well. But yes, they can be used to alter environments, to stabilize energies, to create electromagnetic phenomena. They can be used in so many different ways. They also create the flow of energy through the Earth's energy lines or ley lines. They support the Earth in creating a stable flow of energy. And we were aware, yes, that certain crystals could be more beneficially placed in other areas. So at times in which there was a more open exchange between the beings that inhabited your world and ourselves, we did move some of them around to create more harmonious flows. And this is something that you will return to using as your memory returns from those ancient times. Well, that, that's very interesting because my friend who moved to Arkansas because of the crystal, he said he thinks that one of his jobs in his lifetime is to figure out how to get you know, usable energy from those crystals. So uh, I will tell him what you said. Yes, it's totally possible. So if that's something that calls to him or to any individual, yes, pursue seeking out ways to harness these crystals, for they were used by your ancient civilizations and they played a, played a key role in Atlantis and in Egypt. And there are many out there that already have some vast understanding. So yes, play with the crystals and see what happens. You can use them in grid formations or in a variety of other technologies. What is the purpose of the pyramids? What was the purpose of the pyramids when they were created? They all had their own purpose. So some of them were stargates. They were interdimensional portals that allowed for beings to enter into states of consciousness that allowed them contact with beings from our world. They also were used for healing. Some of them were specifically designed to create an acoustic environment and an energetic environment that would allow for more rapid healing and energy transference to take place. Yes, some of them were tombs, though they were intentionally placed where they were and designed the way they were so that those beings that performed rites there and those who came to be buried there could retain a clearer connection with the galactic beings. And there was a gradual shift taking place at these times in which, yes, beings like ourselves were present in your world, though as things were shifting and your world was in a sense energetically devolving, we left gradually over a period of time. And temples and pyramids were one way that those beings could retain the connection to beings like ourselves. That is interesting because there is a big crystal in Kauai, you know, one of the Hawaiian islands, that I think he said came from Arkansas, was, was in Arkansas, and is now in Kauai in, at a monastery, at a, in a, at a, a Hindu monastery. Yes. And I went to see it. I'd seen it before, and I went to see it in January. And a woman who was there said to me that they built a, a temple there, where, and they brought all the granite. The, the temple was made from granite, which they brought from India to Kauai. Yes. And it was all hand chipped out of the earth because they didn't want to destroy the vibration. And it's a beautiful temple. And they're planning to put this crystal in the center of the temple. Yes. And they were going to do it this year in 2022, but the astrology, they said, was not 
supported with that, and so they didn't do it. So the crystal still is not in the temple, which kind of disappointed me because it was one reason I went over there. But you know they'll move it when it's appropriate. Yeah. But a couple things about that temple, I read years ago. They said that when they put that crystal in that temple, um, and then there's a door. It really isn't a door because there aren't any really. It's an open air temple. I mean there's columns and a roof. But there's a pole outside the front door of the temple which looks at the Waialua River. And that pole is wrapped in copper. And they said if you go in the temple when the crystal is there and sit between the crystal in the middle of the temple and this pole wrapped in copper outside the, what they call the front door, but you know, on the side where the river is, that it would reverse your karma. And I always thought that was a very interesting thing, which is why I wanted to go and sit there. You know, I thought you could get rid of bad karma. So, have you ever heard? I mean, is that? Do you think that's really possible? Sounds like cheating. <laughs> well, we remind you again of this idea of the universal law that what you put out comes back. Mm -hmm. So, in the present, as long as you are doing positive, good actions and carrying out good intentions then that will be the energy that comes back to you. You can rectify past actions done in ignorance or with ill intent by consulting those who you may have impacted and asking for forgiveness and asking for how you can repair that connection with them. But if you didn't do anything that caused harm or you have already attempted to repair all of your past bad actions, then there's nothing you need to do to correct your karma. The idea of the negative karma often keeps people perpetuating loops of fear. So recognize that one of the ways you create your reality is by what you anticipate. And if you're constantly concerned that something might be off about your vibration, you inevitably create something off of your vibration. The best thing to do is raise your frequency to that of joy and passion, as we've shared, or the channel has shared, yes, and allow that energy to carry you. For when you're putting that energy out, that is sure to be the energy that returns on to you. And yes, there is some understanding of uh, karma that sometimes energy from other lifetimes comes to impact this lifetime. This does take place in subtle ways, though this happens usually through a negative belief. A negative belief that is active in this lifetime has a connection with some other lifetime and that energy from that lifetime bleeds through and activates that belief to cause desires that are out of alignment with your own highest nature. That is the only way that you generate more negative karma. However, back to this idea of that place and these kinds of devices, yes, crystals w and Crystals, when used with elements like copper or other conductive metals and elements that support a clearing energy, can remove negative energy from your field. And to use these technologies is very helpful if you find that you start to accumulate negative charges. To intentionally place crystals in your own space and regularly cleanse and purify them can help you continually remove those negative charges. And also remember that these crystals are living entities. They're conscious. And when you listen to them and attune to them, you can receive information from them as well. You are co-creating with the crystals and the crystal kingdom has the intention to support your world in this process of ascension as well. That's why so many of you are called to them. So see it as that process of co-creation and do use them to create high frequency atmospheres.
ठीक है So if you're anything you can do, because I don't get, I mean, I love crystals, and I do have crystals in my house, but I don't get messages from them. Is there anything you can do to, like... Do you get feelings them? from them? Get feelings? Yeah. Do I get feelings, what do you think? Yeah. Well, when I, you hold a particular crystal, does it make you I mean, feel... I mean, I feel I like them, they're beautiful, you yeah. know. Maybe I should start talking to them. Yes. <laughs> so, work with what's already happening for you. If you feel an attraction, mm -hmm. that is part of that interaction. Your attraction to something, your affinity to it, is what creates that relationship. Mm -hmm. You might be attracted to amethyst because it reminds you of a certain person in your life or it reminds you of perhaps a certain archetype or character. Many people associate amethyst with a priest or a king, and by holding the amethyst in their pocket or having it close to them, that inner archetype comes to life within them, and they get a clearer sense of their own, own inner spiritual authority. But other people have a different relationship with amethyst. It depends on their soul history. Another crystal, like amber, might call to you for a different reason. Amber might be something that soothes you, or it might remind you of honey. In this example, some people who feel amber is like honey receive the energy of sweetness from the amber. So it can help them add a greater richness and pleasure to life. It's all up to you. Allow your creativity and your imagination to be a part of this as well. Ask yourself, why am I really attracted to this crystal? What does it remind me of? Let your imagination play. And in your imagination, you'll start to receive more messages from the crystal. You might simply get an idea to put all of the crystals in a circle for a period of time. You might get the message to place each crystal of a certain type in one corner of your home. Or you might get a completely different idea. Listen to whatever comes to you, and if you aren't getting any clear feeling or any attitude at all from the crystal, ask them and pay attention to the information that comes in your thoughts. For, again, your own thoughts and feelings are often ways that you're receiving energy from the environment around you. Many of you have fallen into some trap that, well, this is just my thought, it's what I'm thinking. And you're forgetting that you're actually a part of the environment around you. And many of the things you're thinking and feeling don't actually come from within you. They come from all of the energy that is influencing you. Well, that all the energy that's out there influencing us in that way. Have any of your people been in contact with any of our government officials? Hmm. Not necessarily us as the Pleiadians, hmm. but yes, your government is in contact with us extraterrestrials. And, well, yo, yes, we are in touch with some of your government as the Pleiadians. Not this being that is speaking through the channel, but some of my kind, yes. Like Valiant Thor? Who is that? Valiant Thor? We're not familiar. Not familiar. Who is that? Was supposedly a extraterrestrial that came in the late fifties. Oh, all right. Excuse me. All right. Uh, I don't know a lot about it. Maybe. Or. Yeah, say his name again. Was it Valiant Thor? Yes. T H O R. He lived in the Pentagon for three years right. during the Eisenhower administration. Yeah. But he was an ET. 
closure then? Well, it was in the time of your World War II that many extraterrestrials were attracted to your world. And this was because the use of nuclear forces goes against the code of the Galactic Alliance. Your world was already under the protection of the Galactic Alliance, but you were in quarantine, meaning that there was a no interference policy. The use of nuclear forces broke the new inter no interference policy because if it got to a point where your planet was destroyed by nuclear forces, that would have an impact on other planets and other systems as everything is interrelated. So we came to stop some of that and we did interact with governments and have had some contact with them, but it isn't that. It is what you might consider minimal. We simply let them know that we are present, we are there. Actually, those in your governments are often very afraid of us. They are alarmed by the fact that we have reached out to them, and they took a long time to decide what to do with some of the information that was shared with them. But things are changing in your world now, and the powers that be, as you might say, are going down the path of gradually releasing more and more information and more and more people who have had experiences in these organizations of sightings and of open contact with extraterrestrials are opening up about it. You are gradually creating the field of transparency so that your world can start to have more complete disclosure. Thank you. Yes, I think to you. What do you know about the agenda to reduce the population of Earth? This is the intention of a couple of individuals. And they might try, but they most likely will not succeed. We don't want to speak in ways that might provoke fear, so what we will say about this is your world has enough space for everyone. It is simply that the resources are not used in the appropriate ways. So the attempts to lower the population will not necessarily work, but there might be other circumstances that lead to your world's population gradually lowering, regardless, until you move into a phase of rebuilding your world. Right now, you are in an elaborate phase of the deconstruction of the old. For so many of the technologies and the ways that your society has been built were not built sustainably and they were not built for the well-being of all humans and all plant and animal life involved. So everything has to be rebuilt. And what you will see over the next years is the failing of some of these systems and some of these old, outdated ways of being. However, there might be certain shock and upheaval. It doesn't have to be dramatic. And you'll actually be surprised to find that it isn't so dramatic that slowly over time, people simply get tired of the old toxic ways of being, and as less people are willing to participate, more will be choosing to co-create harmoniously. In terms of this agenda, yes, there are various substances that they attempt to push on you, and ways that they put toxins in everyday products. They are mostly working to make certain people or make more people infertile. 
So they don't necessarily want to outright kill people, but they are, yes, using some of these technologies to reduce the fertility rate. But the plan will not succeed. That's all we can really say. Thank you. When you spoke of the population, um, when you spoke of the population, what do you have any idea about the Georgia Guidestones? Who put them up, and what is the story behind that? All right, one moment. These are prophecy stones. They carry a very powerful frequency, and those who come to them can experience a profound energetic shift as they enter that space, there is a gateway that is open there. And this, these sorts of gateways are present in many physical locations, like we've spoken about the pyramids. But there are, are also other physical locations that were mm, placed in specific points for the, because the creators of these places understood that there was already a powerful geomagnetic field created by the ley lines of the earth, and by placing the structure on top of that formation, it amplified the field. And so people who come into these vortex places will uh, have an easier access to um, higher dimensional states of consciousness. And of course, in these higher dimensional states of consciousness, prophecy is one of the gifts. Prophecy is that foresight to allow one to see what could be if the right decisions are made and what could be avoided if the wrong decisions were avoided. Mm. Who put that there? Mm. We will say that it was imparted by Syrian, Palladian, though humans did the actual work. Thank you. Yes, I think it's you. Who or what is responsible for the Georgia guy stones? Are you familiar with them? Oh, yes, we just spoke Georgia about that, though. Who, who's responsible for it? Again, Pleiadians and Syrians imparted the information to humans who started to do the work. So the Pleiadians had a hand in it? Yes, we inspired it. Christianity, 
they all talk about this. They have different names for it. You know, they'll call it satanic. You know, it's Satan in Christianity, but it's called other things in other religions and other civilizations. So, I, and I do tend to think it's there in the human collective unconscious, and people are talking about it. You know, how can we mitigate or lessen the impact because it seems to be so strong right now? You know, it's like, it's called, the American Indians called it Wachiko. Some psychologists today are writing books and calling it, you know, a mind virus. Some people call it a, basically a psychosis. You know, that there's a kind of insanity going on in the world today. And I think to a certain extent there is. Um, but some people are trying to find out what can we do to mitigate it? What can we do to lessen the effect because it seems so powerful right now? So the virus itself in the simplest way is fear. The root of all of the negativity that people put out is fear. And fear, we present to you today as the absence of the perception of choice. So the mind perceives, your mind is perceiving so many phenomena around you. And the mind shapes how you see reality through those perceptions. When you don't perceive that you have a choice, you act out of instinct because there's seemingly only one option. Choice allows you to understand that in this situation, I could attack this seemingly other enemy, or I could instead mold my perception in a different way to see that perhaps we have something in common. Choice allows you to recognize that even when you don't seem to have the resources or the things that you desire, there might be other ways of getting it. But fear numbs you, or rather blinds you, to seeing the other possibilities and makes it seem as if this is the only thing that I could do. This fear is actually natural. It is part of your animal nature, and thus in so many of the traditions out there, the devil, or something of this nature, is presented having <clears throat> animalistic features and qualities. Yet, this has led to a movement in the other direction, that people attempt to override the animal nature and override this inner darkness and negativity. So why this fear and this energy disease or virus has, is becoming so bad is because people have either attempted to look away from it or make it wrong or create some sort of system that would oppress and suppress the animal nature when really all of you have those aspects of you. And instead of suppressing them, it must be made conscious. You have to process what that fear is. And when you can be present with the fear and not react to it instinctively, then the whole thing will change. The remedy for this is the energy of love. In order to truly remedy this, you have to tap into unconditional love for your own negativity, for your own darkness and your own violent side. If you can have a deep level of compassion for this aggression in all of humanity and recognize that beings who attack and who enact any kind of violence are deeply afraid and in that fear they don't see any other option, you can extend to them that love and by doing that you show them that love is an option. You don't necessarily have to or actually you never have to put yourself 
in danger to love another. So this means, in a very practical way, if you're in a relationship with somebody who is deeply entrenched in these fear-based patterns and act violently in a physical or emotional way, the best thing to do is to love them where you are safe and protected. Because many of you, especially those of you who are empathic and attuned to higher energy, want to go directly into these situations and love these individuals until they're better. But you have to have the highest degree of love first for yourself. When you come together in groups of people and you send out that frequency of unconditional love through meditation or simply through doing what you love to do, whether that's singing, cooking, dancing, talking about art, watching programs, talking to the trees, looking at crystals, riding roller coasters, whatever you like to do the most, if you dedicate that as an act of love to the all, that is remedying this in your world. But of course, many of you who are called to be specialists will have a particular affinity and a deep level of love for going into healing modalities or into uh, communities where you can specifically address these negative patterns. And it is all about the soul's individual calling. Yes, it is very important that some individuals are guided by love to do that. But if love guides you to do something else, we want to remind you that as long as you're guided by love, you're actually being a part of the remedy. So yes, this virus exists and it isn't more complex than fear. Though the way that you solve it is by being an embodiment of love. Yes, sir, thanks to you as well. And we would say again that this is seeming to get worse now because your world is at a point of a palpable shift in energy. It's been this way for some decades. This time has been predicted and prophesized. And more and more of you are tuning into this understanding that your world is now going through a powerfully charged part of this particular universe called a photon belt. This is allowing for highly charged particles of energy to energize everyone here. And this is a time in which you are moving from being limited only to the fourth dimension of experience into this fifth dimension of unconditional love. People are having experiences of enlightenment and immersion in that state of unconditional love more than they ever have before. Yes, of course, there were always some faints, but now there are many more than there were before. And of course, there are more people, but there's also more presence of this higher frequency energy. And there is also just as much presence of this negative dark energy. So when you look at things like school shootings, remind yourself that it wasn't so long ago that there was genocides and crusades. So you still have, yes, great violence, but you all have also emerged from even greater darkness. But yes, it is true that there are more instances of psychosis. But again, it's because the light is becoming so bright and so strong that it pushes this to the surface. And not necessarily you here with us today, or those who are drawn to this message, but many will have experiences of sudden psychosis, where all of a sudden they seem to lose their minds because they have been living on autopilot so long, driven by fear, 